do you remember a time where you became aware of your race? I would say probably when I was a youngster, between uh, five and eight years of age, when another child, a neighborhood kid, pointed it out to me. Did any feelings emerge? Not really, just due to the fact that my family is pretty multicultural. My mother is biracial, okay. so we have a couple of different cultures in our family. So. Mm -hmm. And I, growing up in Detroit, I was exposed to some things. I live right outside of Dearborn. And so it was a little different uh, being from Detroit and then you go up to Dearborn. This was in the 70s, so it was a little different. And things, you know, you, you wonder why you couldn't play with a certain kid because of race. And, uh, but my mother would always teach us that, you know, no matter who you are, you're a person first. And then you look in the aspect of uh, that, especially coming multi with a multicultural, our, my heritage is African American and uh, Hispanic. Cuban in general, specifically. My grandfather was Cuban, my grandmother was African American. So with your background, uh, was there a sense of pride in your heritage or was there an attempt to bring any sense of shame? I would say more so pride than shame. Uh, if you're growing up and you're looking at what the media or music displays, those are things that can you didn't want to be associated with the, the pride part of it. It, was, it. it all depends on what you, which way you look at. You look at the glass half full or half empty. And I've always tried to be a positive person. So no matter what, you realize what things are for what they are, and then you move forward from there. That sounds like your mom. Yeah, my mother was a big influence on that. My whole family, though. So my siblings, we we have different skin tones and different hair texture and those things. So my sisters would get attacked by. I shouldn't say attack, but it was m much more discrimination against African Americans than the average because uh, they were light skinned. They, they looked more Hispanic. And so growing up, it was a lot rougher. But then some folks accepted them for that. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, I was like light enough where I didn't offend anybody or dark enough where I was friends with people. <laughs> so those are the things. You even have those subcultures within certain races. And so yeah, and that was one thing with my mother's. And I'm not sure if my mother, I'm sure my mother did have some things growing up because she was, she looked more Hispanic than she did look African American. And so, but she never talked to us about it. And we never, it was just one of those things that never was in our home that, you know, we looked at that first. And then as an, an adult, when I grew up, I went to the military right out of high school. And so from that age on, you started finding who you are as a man, as a person, mm -hmm. as a young adult. In the military, everyone is gloomy. You don't have time to, Oh, you black, you white. You know, those subcultures, You it becomes your own culture in the military. So I learned at an early age, you know, I had to depend on my family, whether they were black, white, red. So I had friends from all over. And I still have these same friends today And I, my philosophy. I, I think going into the military, it helped open my eyes more so. And then when I did my time in the military, I came to college. I came to Michigan State. And so you even see more so that it's important that, you know, you embrace other individuals. And it's, otherwise, you can stay in a, a state of ignorance. And I decided not to do that. So. Yeah, so it sounds like your awareness of race changed over time. Sure, absolutely. When I was younger, again, you don't know you're around everybody, all of you in the same, you're all black, at least in my neighborhood. We had, we had I think in my high school, we had one or two Asians, one or two whites. And then when I graduated high school, as a matter of fact, our valedictorian, was a white female, which out of a high school of 4,000 students, like 99% were African American. And I thought that was pretty unique. And that was, for me, that was, it made, it made, I never thought about it. I went to a Lutheran high school as well in Detroit, and it was about 35% African American, and the rest was white. And so there, I, I did come into a little more, and this was in the city of Detroit, right outside of Dearborn. Mm. And both the high schools I went to are now closed. Mm. And so the uh, the Lutheran High School, my sister graduated in the last class in like the early 90s before they closed the school down. And that school, it was still had some separate African-American teenagers set together and the whites set together. And this was in the 80s. And when I went to the, to all 99% black school, graduated from that uh, Cooley High School in Detroit, you had 
other subcultures, athletes, geeks, those kind of things. It had nothing to do with your skin color if you were smart. So all my friends were kind of in a different classification based on grade points and likes and dislikes and those kind of oh, things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The infamous so, high school cliques, right? Yep. Yeah. High school cliques, <laughs> right? And so in the military, you had the same thing, but it wasn't as much, you know, it was more regional, where you're from and then what you do, but you end up spending so many times with so many different individuals. You learn to appreciate others' cultures. I think that's when I started having, I would say, white friends. When I was in high school, when I went to the Lutheran High School, I could not tell you one of my, I couldn't tell you, because we were black. The black kids were separated from the whites. Mm -hmm. We did it on our own. It wasn't like, yeah. you know, we, it wasn't any racism. Or, I had friends I wrestled in high school, and I played football, so I had friends that were white. I just didn't hang out with them. Mm -hmm. But when I went to the military, and I was with these men, young men every day and we worked together we trained together we practiced for battle you just became a part of your family mm -hmm. and so that's when I think my barriers broke down even more so because mm -hmm. I was always still kind of oh yeah blacks and whites the military I just that just mm -hmm. diffused and so mm -hmm. I mean you still have it to a degree not that it's going to ever go away so so how how would you define racism in your own words I would say more of like individuals well, being aware of their own race, meaning if they want to look at their race as being superior, or those kind of things, uh, you can go into even discriminating, and what I call it, um, creating derogatory thoughts or patterns around what you do, you believe because of what you think your race is. Mm -hmm. And so, my philosophy is the race is the human race, and then you have the subcultures and all the things that come through after that. So. Thank you. Is that it? That's right. great.